Hey guys, it's Barry and DR, and we're back with another family here. Probably a family that has more experience than any of the other families that we've interviewed. They've been in the country, I believe, about four years now. Three. 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 <laughs> and uh, they've lived in how many different regions of the Dominican Republic, guys? Five. Five, Five different regions. How would you rate Cabrera? I mean, from your expectations, how do you guys like um, what you're seeing in Cabrera? A lot. A lot? <laughs> is that is that okay? Yeah. You like it? How do you feel about Cabrera? I love it. You love it? Now, the, both of you guys, um, you're fluent in Spanish already, completely, or ninety percent fluent in Spanish. Yeah. yeah. I'm and around. I'm around fifty. Oh, about fifty percent. And. <laughs> How are you finding, uh, that's fine, that's life. How are you guys finding, uh, like, do you feel kind of stronger, more empowered that you can speak Spanish and English as if you could just speak one language? Uh -huh. And tell us about your friends here. Tell us about what life is for you guys. I want to, you know, the world wants to hear about what your life's like. Many, many, many kids are going to be jealous. You first. Okay, me first. Sure, <laughs> just have fun. There's a best friend who goes, I have a very best friend who goes to our school. He's from Spain, his name is Luis. He's very nice. You have to bring Luis on the show. Yeah, <laughs> sure. But sure. Luis, he lives in an apartment with my, with my baseball expert friend, Moises, and then his sister, Leti. <laughs> so, if we're, do you like living better in this country or better in when you were in uh, Tennessee? Here. You like it better here? You feel better here? Mm -hmm. Tell us about, I know I'm always seeing you with a bunch of other people your age and you're the little social butterfly <laughs> and but tell us a little bit about how you like it or what you've experienced as, you know. Um, in my school there's a bunch of kids who speak uh, English so I'm able to speak English most of the time but they can teach me Spanish and I can teach them English because they're learning English. So it's a lot easier for me to learn Spanish whenever I'm in an English school. And that's all. Well, why don't you welcome all our viewers in Spanish and hi, it's nice to have you here. Bienvenido. <laughs> and let me ask you guys another question. I'm, I know there's, uh, you know, no place is Eden. You know, on Earth, I mean, it's it's up in the in the spiritual world. But all in all, if you had to do it over again, one, would you have? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Two, and I want something from both you guys on this, okay? Because we we're friends, and I, I I want I want it out to the viewers. What advice, if any, could all four of you take your turn, give people? that would consider coming down, looking around on a DYD tour, a discovery tour, uh, making uh, a region of Cabrera, Rio San Juan, a possibility of full or part-time, specifically younger families with children. Please, give, give them some advice, guys, because... I like Cabrera because we still have that small town feel with, we have restaurants, we have a great grocery store, we have Everything that we, we need, it's here, but it's still a small town. Whereas, um, you know, some people may look at going to Puerto Plata or Punta Cana or, you know, somewhere like that to maybe live. Um, but we don't really like the, the big touristy areas that, mm -hmm. that come with that, which, you know, uh, a lot of times that can be crime and everything else. Or just being hustled. For, just, yeah. I mean, nobody um, hustles you here. Right. right. And so that's, that's my advice. That, that would be... Um, that's what we like about Cabrera. What do you think they'll have to get used to coming from America from a woman's point of view? Um, not having 24-hour <laughs> Walmart or <laughs> grocery stores when you get up, yeah, 2 o'clock in the morning you want an ice cream or something, you know. Um. I, I think, I think a, for, if, you plan on, if you plan on being, uh, uh, let me think of the word in Spanish, ten, ten, how do you say it? Tenyek? Tacaño. 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 If you plan on being a tacaño like me, a cheapskate, tightwad. Then, <laughs> tightwad, then 
you're probably you're probably going to be doing your own maid service yourself and the clothes and things like that. And I think from a woman's point of view, because we don't have a maid. Not, I mean, we could afford one. I mean, it, that's something that is affordable in this country. But we do all those things ourselves. Same with Leanne, as you know. Yeah. Right. And so with with her doing clothes, it, you just have to get used to that kind of lifestyle to where, well, the city power's on and we're going to use it and we'll do the clothes or whatever. And then because we don't want to maybe run our batteries down or, or you know, because it's a different lifestyle, it, it's, it's a little... It takes a little getting used to that, I think, as a woman. But from the guy's point of view, it's kind of cool. It's kind of, it's different having a, this two system kind of electric deal. And not to say that Cabrera won't be, you know, 24 7 like the, the city that we used to live in, the first one, Dahavon. About the time we moved away, they made it a 24 hour electric city, too, as well. And so it's, it's one of those things that once you're here and, and you're living here, it takes a little getting used to. Um, do you that, mean like adjusting the frequency as to when you do things? Yes, okay. exactly. Because you know how it is in America. It's you're you would never be interrupted in doing. Like you just that. go do your clothes when <laughs> yeah. you when you want to, and you know I mean here we don't have dryers or anything like that, so the sun needs to be shining before you d do your clothes right, also. Right, so right. We don't use there's dryers, just a few yeah. little things like that. We don't use a microwave. I haven't had a well, microwave in three years. Well, of course, it we is. Of course, we don't pay an that electric bill like you do in America either. We yeah. pay electric bills that are like water bills. You know. Yeah. Well, are you finding uh, are you finding both on battery and city that you're you're reliable in this house? Or oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it's a matter of timing. Would you say when you do the oh yeah the laundry That's, and what have you? But that 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 comes easy. That's. And there and there are ways to, to overcome a lot of those things. You know, if you want a, a bigger system where you can do it all the time and, and never be interrupted. But for us, it's it's just a matter of we want to live a lot like the Dominicans in, in the way that we do things. I, we don't want we don't want walls that they can't scale. You know, that makes us right. look like we're in fear. Right, we, right. We have bars on our house, but every house in this town has bars. Well, I'm there's not sure why. <laughs> well, there's no. I can answer that by talking to a lot of people. There is no electronic surveillance companies here. There you go. There's, but the point is, we make it clear there are B and E's in in this part of the region too. I mean, is is things spread out to uh, any kind of extremity where it's dangerous or? unsafe in, in the town? I don't think so, but I mean, we paint it honest. There are B&Es uh, everywhere and little bits of crime here and there, but sure. there's no place that my wife doesn't feel safe walking. But again, everybody knows us. You see, if you make, like you guys, if you make yourself known to both the locals, exactly. not just hang around with the expats, if you blend in with the locals, right. you said what I was gonna say. it's yeah. a whole <laughs> different thing. Sorry, yeah, we, bud. We, no, no, it's exactly, she, go ahead and say what We you can walk say. down any street here and we will have kids yelling for them, yelling for us, and yelling, profit, profit, you know. Whatever happened teacher, to that teacher. in Western nations? Well, we, we, we stay inside Western of our Western houses, nation. you know, the temperature control in there, and, and you know, it's, it's, you don't do things, you don't do things outside, like my kids today, you know, they were outside playing today. And, yeah, we're playing and, soccer um, in an hour. That's we're, why we came yeah. early to not exactly. rush I mean, you guys. We live yeah. outside. Yeah, mostly here it's, it here. is outdoor living. We, we talk to our neighbors. We, yeah. You know, and so uh, I love that. We, we were raised that way. We were raised out so in the country. So were we out in, in the, the little country. town in Canada. Uh -huh. And so. Yeah. I think, I think the, the one thing, if you come from an American city to here, uh, or a small town like we did, um, Tennessee, big plug for Rockville, Tennessee right now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but if you come from a small city to a place like this, because of air conditioning and winter and, and the heat of summer, some of those things that we deal with there, people are, are almost always indoors. And if you go into a Mexican neighborhood in the United States, like in Shelbyville, when we live there, and you're driving through, everybody's outside. And there's this huge difference. And, and the reason they do that is the same thing we have here is, is people, they still just come out and they'll sit under their trees. They're, they're not attached to the electronics or the television in the house like the we are in America. Or the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And so it lends itself to us knowing each other a whole lot better. Yeah. And uh, you know, you see all your neighbors almost every day as you pass by them. Jonah, tell us, why don't you tell the other children your age what if they if their mom and dad wanted to look at moving and relocating to a different country from you living in having the experience where the other children don't what would you tell the other children about who might be worried about school and will i make friends you know with what what young people worry about what can you tell them well the first time i got into my 
Altamira Dominican School. I was a little bit kind of nervous. Sure. Every time I get nervous, I kind of let out a little smile. Mm -hmm. But now, if you're afraid of new school, you can make friends even if you get a little nervous. Like if you got a little bit nervous and show and tell and said the wrong thing, and everybody starts chuckling a little bit, just go chuckle with them. You don't have to be embarrassed, it's fine. This well, is coming from the guy that has a, tons of He's years of ahead of his age, that's for sure. <laughs> what can you tell some of the, the young folks your age, or you know, uh, some of the, you know, the girls that you know going into teenage years about going into a new country, a new school, you got to be socially accepted, and to those kind of things. What, what can you tell them about, does it make sense, or is it silly, or just tell us how you feel about it. When we first moved, here, I didn't speak any Spanish except like hello, goodbye, welcome, stuff like that. So I was pretty nervous and um, I had to get used to seeing spiders, cockroaches, and stuff like that, which was pretty scary. <laughs> and it took me a while to uh, make friends because I didn't speak any Spanish. So they would like, they would. Like, at the first day I'd meet, meet them, they'd be like, oh, this is so cool, there's a new American here. And then the next day, they'll just act like I never met them. <laughs> so it was hard, but now, since I'm able to speak more Spanish and I have ki no kids that speak English, it's a lot easier for me. But I'm, I still don't, I'm still not okay with seeing spiders and cockroaches. Me You're still not okay with those? <laughs> we cohabitate with, uh, that's one thing about here is, you know, because we don't have air conditioning, the windows, you just learn to cohabitate with lizards and ants, and they come in and they'll do their job, and, you know, mm -hmm. we let them. When we first moved here, it's like, ah, oh, there's ants, and you gotta kill them, get them out. No, we leave two lizards in our bedroom, and they eat all the ants. It's, it's the greatest little mm -hmm. ant killers you've ever seen. And, but uh, you found, since you've, um, learned to speak Spanish, it's been beneficial to your lifestyle, mm -hmm. much more so. Would you advise other children your age the importance of learning a second language for their future? Okay. Um, it's learning Spanish helps you learn a bunch of other languages and when, when you're older it helps a lot. I can't explain that because that's mm -hmm. just what my parents say. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're Latin-based languages, so right. many words are the same. Like French is much easier for someone who mm -hmm. speaks French to learn Spanish than someone who speaks English. Mm -hmm. But uh, how long did that take you? I know the young folks are going to wonder from but How long uh, months? How many months did it take you before you could start communicating uh, with the other children and now of course you have English friends but with the Spanish friends let's concentrate on that how, how many months did it take you before you could at least speak um, together and become friends it took about the first the first time we lived in I I barely learned any like hello goodbye but I in the next town when I started going to a school that's when I started learning Spanish. It took me about two months, maybe? Three? Probably about six months. You were... Six months? No, that we were living here. They got tossed. Since we moved here. They got tossed right into the, uh, what's the expression, tossed into the, the, the fire or whatever. Oh, the immersion, full immersion. Yeah, because yeah. we put them in a Spanish school with a, it was like a little private school, and they have them everywhere in every town uh, where they take care of... Uh, at a little lady's house yeah. and yeah. So, there's like man, they kids. both they both just flourished, you know. And, and of course, like she said earlier, the English they want to learn the English, so there's always this that's joint right. Work. Yeah, you tell him in Spanish that in in a few minutes or not in a few minutes. Tell him uh, we're going to play soccer at the the field this afternoon. Um, do you want to go or some? Tell him something in Spanish. Yeah, you tell do. the camera. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Uh, Te gusta hacer show? <laughs> say it. Say what I said. Say we're going to no, play soccer. No, no, no. Hold on. Esta tarde vamos a ir a jugar fútbol. There you go, guys. So. With the accent. Yeah, it's uh, it, it to me. It's it's beautiful. Uh, all of us speak a fair yeah. bit of Spanish here, and and uh, you don't have to be an expert. That's the point. But the point is, the better question is, what if your family's not going to learn a second language? You might want to look at it from that context and. 
<clears throat> you know, I, uh, I I know you guys had to get going. I, uh, we all really we all really <laughs> appreciate you guys taking the time to maybe help some other good good families that are looking for options and the way things seem to be developing. And um, would it be okay if any of the viewers would like to get an email from you to ask Definitely. you guys Absolutely. some questions? Sure. Would you be okay? You, oh, you, all right, you're the, you, you're both the social butterflies. Uh, okay, well, listen, uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, this is Barry and DR, and we'll see you on the next YouTube.